Good morning, everybody out there in YouTube land. I'm Rob Goodwin. This is Ketogenic Bodybuilding Morning Muscle Episode 3. And this week, uh, a couple things kind of stuck out to me. Um, this week, I was going through the motions of training clients and training myself and getting back in the swing of nutrition. And, you know, things are pretty cool right now because I'm on a gain phase. So my calories are up. I'm eating a little bit more, a little bit more liberal with my food choices. Not quite as restricted, which is nice. So I feel pretty good, feel pretty strong. But uh, I was perusing the YouTube universe, um, as I always do. And uh, what stuck out to me is, uh, regardless of what videos you're watching, if the subject matter has to do with strength training and ketogenic or keto and bodybuilding or keto and muscle or, or whatever the search terms may be, um, you're going to find very few people talking about it. That's why we're a little unique, but you're definitely going to find people hating on it. So, and I always find that entertaining because as within the Facebook group, usually somebody that comes in with some sort of a, 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 you know, a jab at keto and strength training or hating on or whatever you want to call it, you usually find out very quickly that, you know, even though they may be sincere in their critique of the two not going well together, uh, it's usually, and usually we find that they've done, they haven't done their due diligence in their research, um, that there's two sides to the story and a lot of their misconceptions can be solved very quickly with some quick explanations. And, you know, of course I'm going to throw my, uh, you know, my two cents in there and uh, tell them that that, as I always do, is the entire reason that my ketogenic bodybuilding hybrid nutrition protocol came into being what we call my DTR protocol and it's worked extremely well and you can quickly take a lot of these misconceptions and turn them on their ear and show people that with a few little tweaks and adjustments you know we can turn this whole thing around and you can train heavy and intense in a low carb diet in a state of mild to moderate ketosis and you can do this with a couple of tweaks and that's where the whole protocol and the whole plan comes together. What I was talking about is, of course, anytime I log on to YouTube, Facebook, you know, whatever, uh, you know, internet forums, you're gonna find the haters. One that was very intriguing to me is, uh, and it's, it's not a hate at all. It, it, there was some pros and cons with this and this little experiment recently done by what I'll call a bodybuilding celebrity personality you know influence or whatever uh a, a guy by the name of seth ferrosi and seth ferrosi let me begin by saying i'm a fan i like this guy he is edgy he s says what's on his mind um disclaimer if you check the guy out you know it's definitely explicit material not for children so if you get offended by language probably not your guy uh, but I do love his honesty. I love his approach and for me, I love his hardcore mentality his Kill it in the gym Bodies lying on the floor kind of to the death kind of attack the day mentality that he has and I also like the fact that he, he you know, he kind of brings this like hardcore almost military um, patriotic vibe, like badass kind of a vibe into it. He has, uh, and I'll give him his props, you know, because I like the guy. He's got a really cool clothing line called um, uh, All American Roughneck, and he's got a supplement line called Axe and Sledge, which uh, I like both. And I like this guy, and I subscribe to his channel, and I follow him. But it just blew me away when I was kind of, you know, surfing through the YouTube channels and the subscriptions that I follow and uh, come to find out that he had uh, embarked on trying keto, you know, as he knew it. And it was an interesting um, video on YouTube. And his initial takeaway, as with many, is it was extremely positive. And as with myself, some of the first things that he noticed was is the increased mental acuity, 
um, as you wean off carbohydrates and glucose and get that you know excess poison out of your system, which in excess it is, uh, he did note and notice as I did 10 years ago that his mental acuity, his focus, his sharpness, everything, his mentality, everything became clearer. He also noticed what I noticed and is, you know, trying to get work done. You know, if you're on a, a, a high carbohydrate diet, it will bog your ass down, especially as you age. And I noticed that as well. I wasn't as productive uh, way back in the day on the higher carbohydrate, even a moderate carbohydrate diet. I found that I had to really eliminate um, all of it for the most part uh to get my edge and my energy back and then the other thing is inflammation uh he notes that there's a decrease in the inflammatory markers and he's feeling better so he's talking about all these phenomenal things almost giddy and excited about it you know as many are you know when you first embark on this of how well things are going so fast forward a, a couple videos later it may have even been the next video the experiment continues as he goes through a hard workout. And I think it was a shoulder workout. And then things, the tone starts to change a little bit because he goes through this hardcore shoulder workout and notices that it's not quite the same feeling in the gym. Um, he's not quite as aggressive in the gym. He doesn't have that animal, you know, mentality in the gym. Um, doesn't quite have the energy and the drive in the gym. And he, you know, you can see that the tide's starting to turn a little bit. So, and then fast forward again, he does another update video. I think it was like 14 days in or something like that. I could be wrong about the number. But then he goes through a, kind of a list of the pros and cons on his keto experiment. And, you know, I, honestly, I saw this coming. When you look at a guy like Seth Ferrosi, big, muscled, beast of a man, um, you know, it's a strong bodybuilder, the type of guy you'd see in the magazines. I mean, I, I could see this coming. And again, this is not a dig. I, I totally appreciate what he did because it gives me this opportunity to kind of turn a wrench and fix a couple minor details. And that might help you understand that this is so possible and so doable and you can reap all the benefits of being in that lower carb, mild to moderate ketosis environment and still be able to attack the gym, build muscle, and build that extreme physique that we talk about. So um, long story short, in his video, he goes down a long list of pros and cons, and he admittedly says the pros list is considerably longer than the cons list. I think he had like 14 or 15 pros. Uh, these are the, the benefits of going keto and they were all many of the things that you would expect and all fantastic things and all the things that that I noticed and the reason that I've continued this lifestyle and will always continue this lifestyle and then he admits kind of with a chuckle that there's only two detractors uh, and there's only two things in his cons list and uh, I'm looking at my note up here because I put uh, he, he says quote no pumps was number one and uh, gym not the same Meaning, you know, if you're like anybody who likes to train hard in the gym, nothing, even though the pump really doesn't mean anything in terms of results, it's a temporary thing, but it's an awesome thing and it's something we all love. And, you know, he noticed that he wasn't getting the same pump as he did when he was, you know, filled with carbohydrate and gym not the same, just meaning his drive and ferocity and ferociousness in the gym was not the same as when he was loading up on some carbohydrates and was this you know high carb uh, bodybuilder so so we kind of put him on the fence well you know what as great as this guy is a little bit of more due diligence and research and digging into a little bit more and even further giving it a little bit more time could have fixed all these things and uh, he could be reaping the rewards, uh, all the benefits, and he could take those two cons, throw them into the pros column and find that this is a very doable and sustainable thing for nearly anyone. Um, so what does that mean? Well, the problem with all of this is, is when you go to research a ketogenic diet, 
inevitably you're going to stumble onto hundreds of articles, videos, books, whatever, um, and they're going to be talking about what the standard ketogenic diet is, right? By, by definition. Sorry, I need this. I need my MCT oil. I know there's people out there that think it's not good. It's awesome. Um, so when you start researching keto, inevitably you're going to start looking at what many would call the, the standard ketogenic diet or what I call the keto dogma. And they're going to make you believe that there's some uh, mystic that came down from the mountain with stone tablets. And on these stone tablets, it says 70, you know, 5% fat, um, you know, 20% protein and 5% carbs. Like this was handed down from God. And this is the formula of a ketogenic diet. And that's just exquisite bullshit. Okay, I'm sorry, but it is. That is not what constitutes a ketogenic diet. Ketosis is a metabolic state. It's not some mystical, magical thing that makes fat melt off your body like a match through paper and makes all of your problem goes away, problems go away and does your taxes for you. Uh, ketosis is a, is, a, is a metabolic state and a very positive metabolic state. And chief among that, in terms of the benefits of mild to moderate ketosis, as I like to call it, because you're not going to get into deep, deep ketosis with the amount of protein that we take in. I'm sorry, you're just not, unless you're just some kind of a genetic freak. But the thing is, is who cares? You don't need to be. You're either in or you're out. And that's the only thing that really matters. That's why pissing on these strips is silly. And if you want to do the blood thing, that's fine. But it really doesn't mean anything. I assure you, if you go into you know 20 to 30 grams of carbohydrate or less per day, you're going to reach a level of mild to moderate ketosis. But anyway, more on that in a second. So, you know, again, many think that you know the ketogenic diet has to be structured around this super high fat, butter chugging kind of a dogma, and that's what leads you to ketosis. Wrong. Repeat after me, write it down on a blackboard a hundred times. Keto is not about high fat. It's about low carb. You reach ketosis by reducing or eliminating carbohydrate. Plain and simple. When you reduce carbohydrate to extremely low levels, you know, you, you withdraw from glucose, the body as a defense mechanism will stop using glucose as an energy source because it has none to draw from and will in turn begin to make a shift and start burning stored body fat as a fuel source and then start producing ketones which are these little powerhouses that are ideal for fueling the brain and other organs and so on. So it's this wonderful metabolic state but it's not some free magic golden ticket that's going to you know, shred you out in three weeks and you know, take you down to 5% body fat. It's part of the path towards that, or it can be. But again, it, it's nothing to do with high fat. It's about low carb. Well, why all the fat? Why all the fat? Well, it's simple. Fat now becomes your new prefer, uh, preferred energy source. So you do have to bring it in. So what you're doing is you're replacing the calories that you've omitted from carbohydrate and you're replacing those with calories from healthy fats. And it becomes a wonderful, healthy environment. And, you know, fun fact, and you've probably read this, you know, carbohydrate is not required to sustain human life, whereas protein and fats are. They must be ingested to sustain life. Whereas if you never, ever uh, ingested another gram of carbohydrate, you could still live a very productive life. Now, could you build an extreme physique without carbohydrate? I don't think so. As I always say, carbohydrate is this wonderful weapon. It's this special tool in the toolbox that helps bring it all together. But it's systematic. You have to take in the right amount and the right frequency, you know, and, and around what's best for your you know, your genetics, your level of output, your unique energy requirements, and so on. And you also have to take into consideration things like, are you in a gain phase? Are you in a cut? And so on. 
So carbohydrates are a fantastic tool, but it's only the special wrench, wrench that's taken out of the box on certain occasions. It's not used every day. Uh, so you have to understand that you do replace the calories that you lose from carbohydrate and you replace those from fat. Now fat having nine calories per gram opposed to carbohydrates four means that you don't have to take in as much food by volume in fats as you did in carbohydrate to receive the same caloric punch. So, you know, the cool thing is, is you don't have to take in tons and tons of fat. Although in a gain phase specifically, fats will often become your dominant nutrient, not by grams, because nine calories per gram fat, four calories per gram protein, but it may become your dominant nutrient um, by calories. So, you know, what I do, and as I mentioned this in the uh, um, gain phase video uh, that, I, that that's here on the channel, what I do when I'm trying to put on muscle in the off season and I gain, I generally start myself or any client with roughly a half a gram of healthy fat per pound of body weight and anywhere from one to 1.5 grams of protein per pound of body weight. And those numbers will differ a little bit whether it be male or female. This is just a, a, a generalization. And then I will bring those numbers up to bring you uh, into the right uh, caloric surplus or right around maintenance if that's your goal. As if you don't really want to put on anymore but kind of maintain where you're at and kind of hang on until the next cut cycle. So that's kind of where we start roughly, and that's a very simple approach, but you know, the, the science comes in when you have to start turning the wrenches on all of it and twisting the knobs and dialing it into that specific individual. So again, you reduce carbohydrate or eliminate it altogether for some. And we do this, I typically generally do this five days a week. And that will in turn put you into a state of mild to moderate ketosis. How long does that take? typically takes about three days for nearly anyone to reach a state of mild to moderate ketosis by reducing carbohydrate that drastically and adhering to uh, the plan, not cheating anywhere. <clears throat> and also you want to make sure that you're tracking, you know, put that stuff into your MyFitnessPal or whatever you're using because things can kind of creep in. And I think many of us live under that weird thing that mental thing where if nobody sees us eating it it never happened well you know it did but um you know tracking is important especially during the initial stages of switching over to this uh, ketogenic bodybuilding hybrid protocol so anyway um getting off track a little bit but again uh, the standard ketogenic diet it, nowhere is it written in stone that it's 75 you know, 20 and five, you know, that's, that's silly. Uh, to reach ketosis, you just have to drastically reduce uh, carbohydrate. You replace those carbohydrate calories um, with fat and then adjust the fat and the protein to your unique requirements. I can tell you that we strongly believe, I strongly believe that protein needs to, to be the most important macros in your plan. It, it, it deserves the highest amount of focus. My clients, especially online, will tell you that when I'm reviewing their macros on a daily basis, the most common theme that they get from me is up the protein, up the protein, up the protein. You know, carbs are looking good. You're under 30. We're, you're dialing in your fats pretty well. They're, they're maybe a little high up that protein, up that protein. So it starts to drill into their heads and then once they start to adopt that philosophy, that's when the magic starts to happen and they see the real benefit, especially if they're training hard in the gym. Standard keto, whatever the hell that means, is not you know, 75, 20, and five. It's reduction of carbohydrate and then you wanna take an adequate protein, roughly a gram to a gram and a half per pound of body weight as a start. Uh, healthy dietary fats, roughly a half a gram to start, and then adjust those numbers up or down to take you to either maintenance or into a surplus if you're trying to really put on uh, additional lean mass. So that's how we want to do that. So again, I mentioned that getting into ketosis only takes about three days, but adapting to using fat 
as your primary energy source and adapting to not having the presence of carbohydrate and adapting to your body not uh, looking for carbohydrate as its primary fuel source uh, can take anywhere from three to six weeks. So where a lot of people, you know, throw up these videos after I tried keto for a week kind of shit, or I tried keto for two weeks kind of shit, they didn't give it enough time. They did not adapt to uh, letting their bodies burn fat as their primary fuel source. You're going to go through a lot of the, the side effects of the detox of carbohydrate coming out of your body. Uh, you can have a, tuple, a couple of tough days on that. And, you know, we all know now that, you know, hydration, electrolytes, sodium, all these things are critically important during that process to make you feel better, you know, as you make that shift and adapt or to becoming a fat burning machine rather than a sugar burning machine. So <clears throat> again, you want to make sure you take proper amount of time to adapt to doing this. And then once you get through that three to six, six weeks adaptation process, provided your compliance was on point, and you didn't have a bunch of cheats making your body still think that glucose is an option here, so still keep craving it, then uh, you're gonna do just fine. I often tell people, get on your calendar, mark six weeks from today, and just get tough and adhere to the plan for the next six weeks, and you're gonna come out of it quite changed and ready to really take this head on and take it to another level and really turn yourself into this ketogenic, you know, bodybuilding machine and work your way towards that building that lean physique. So you have to reach a level of mild to moderate ketosis. You have to go through it for several weeks and reach that adaptation point. And then, you know, after that, again, back to Seth Ferrosi's complaint and others that I've seen, you're not getting the pump. You don't have the energy in the gym. You're not an animal anymore. That's simple back to carbohydrates. If you look at my DTR protocol, my deplete target reload principle, it's you deplete carbohydrate, make up those calories with very high protein, fat around your unique energy needs and caloric needs, and you keep your carbohydrates at roughly 30 grams or under coming from fibrous vegetables or even none if that's your thing. And then what we do is around workouts, we target the number of carbohydrates around that workout for the energy component. Because people, carbohydrates, that's just what carbohydrates are. It's an energy component. That's what it is. It's gas. It's fuel. So by taking in a small amount of the right types of carbohydrate around your training, you can still be a beast in the gym. You can still get that pump. You can still have that ferocity or ferociousness in the gym and you can still kick ass. I don't know from experience. No, you know, I trained as hard as anybody for a decade when I was, you know, coming into this industry back in the 90s, and for a 51-year-old guy, I still maintain a pretty high level of intensity, and this is exactly what I do. I take in roughly 18 grams of fast absorbing cyclic dextrin um, uh, ar around my workout. So what I do is I do it pre-intra meaning I like to uh, mix up a shake uh, or, or a pre intra workout drink. I, I'm still using this stuff called uh, Intracell 7 Black by Primeval Labs. Um, there's a link in the notes here if you wanna try a jug of that and you can even get 10% off with a code that I throw down there, which is pretty cool. And uh, so I will do two scoops of that and it gives me 18 grams of carbohydrates. That's not a lot of carbs. It's, re it's really not a lot at all but it's plenty to get me through a challenging workout. And by the time I complete that last set of that workout, that, those 18 grams are gone. They're burned up, they're used up, they're disposed of, they've done their job. It was for work. You know, it's, it's a business trip, not a vacation. I use that phrase a lot. So I take in that 18 grams of fast absorbing cyclic dextrin and that particular supplement I mentioned, the Intracell 7 Black also has some pump matrix formulas in there to achieve a greater pump. The, you know, the vasodilators, the nitric oxide boosters and all this stuff. It also has some sodium, some magnesium, some potassium. So it's just great cocktail of things that work very, very well with somebody who is operating in a low carb or ketogenic state. So I highly recommend it. And you can duplicate that by taking in 
some uh, fast absorbing dextrin. Some people literally just do a handful of sweet tarts. You know, some people will do a rice cake with a little bit of natural peanut butter on it. That's fine. Find what works for you, but look into that 18, 20, typically no more than 25 grams of carbohydrate is about all you're really going to need to get the benefit of that, you know, energy and uh, ferociousness that you're looking for in the gym. And uh, I have just as much energy in the gym doing that as I ever did back in the day, downing 400, 500 grams of carbs a day. And I don't get as bogged down and I don't get that tired and, you know, almost narcotic effect of the carbohydrates after the fact. So it works really, really well. Um, and my light just died, so we're going to get moody. Um, so again, uh, you want to target carbohydrates around your workout. So we call that the targeting. And then the refeeds, one day out of seven, uh, I give myself and my clients a carbohydrate refeed where we'll take in a certain number of grams of carbohydrates depending on who you are, your genetics, your size, your output, gender, and so forth. And that could look something like cream of rice with your eggs for breakfast. It could be, you know, a cup of rice with lunch. And then it could be a sweet potato with whatever protein source you use for dinner. So uh, that's how the refeed principle works. So, so the formula doesn't have to be complicated. Again, just meat, fish, plants, healthy oils. And I eat uh, more on a frequent basis. I don't do intermittent fasting. I think to build the extreme physique that we're looking for, to, to build that overly muscular physique, to put on as much lean mass and sustain that lean mass as possible. Uh, I've tried it both ways and I'm a firm believer that eating, you know, five, six meals a day, every two, three, four hours is gonna be your best approach to maintaining that lean muscularity and building that lean muscularity that you're trying to put on. This is for both men and women. That could change in a cut. I don't have as much issue with somebody incorporating a little bit of intermittent fasting or fasting during a cut. I don't do it myself. I still maintain the frequent eating throughout the day that just makes the cut process easier for me. Opinions vary on that. But uh, again, I, I basically laid out the entire formula in simple, easy to understand terms. And if a lot of these people would play with this technique and this plan, uh, adding a little bit of structured carbohydrate around those workouts, having that structured refeed one day out of seven to replenish glycogen stores, to top off glycogen in their muscle, to throw a little bit of gas on the fire metabolically and have a little bit of a hormonal reset, then they could find that that pump that they were missing can still be there. It certainly is for me and my training partners and other clients. Um, their energy and level of um, uh, output in the gym can still be there. It certainly is for me. I have no issue with that. Uh, and then the last thing I want to mention in terms of having that pump and having that energy in the gym is sodium. And... Uh, a great little hack that you can use is just whatever pre or intra workout, you know, in addition to using your sodium throughout the day, I put pink salt on freaking everything and love it. Uh, I put pink Himalayan sea salt on just about everything I eat throughout the day with my other seasonings. And if you want to get a ridiculous, you know, vein busting, skin tearing pump, you know, take in a, a big mega dose of sodium. 15 minutes before your workout. This can be achieved by literally uh, adding it to your pre-workout drink. Um, some people literally just do, you know, a couple tablespoons of pink salt and, and knock it down. I think the most tolerable way to do it and even pleasurable way to do it is if you take two chicken bouillon cubes, you can do beef too if that's your thing. You take the two chicken bouillon cubes, which are extremely high in sodium, Put those into, you know, your, your typical coffee mug. Add some water. Heat that baby up in the microwave for a couple of minutes. Or, you know, do the tea kettle thing. You know, add, add to it. Let it dissolve. Stir it up. Hit that, you know, 15, 20 minutes before your workout. It just tastes like chicken soup. Broth. It's, it's great. And uh, tell me 
about your pump during your workout after you try that. It's ridiculous. So anyway, that's all I got for today. I'm gonna finish my giant mug of whey MCT coffee, uh, get a little bit of work done this morning, and then head back home and uh, do some work around the house. I didn't mention it at the start of the video, but it would mean a lot to me. My light just died again. It would mean a lot to me if you would hit the subscribe button. Um, you know, I know this is uh, laid back, lots of ranting here, but this is some good information and you can really help me further this cause and this mission, this mission by hitting that subscribe button. And uh, it really goes a long way in helping this channel move forward. Um, head to my website, kgbodybuilding.com. Great free resources there. Links to all my different coaching programs if you need some help in all this stuff. And lastly, uh, our Facebook group, Ketogenic Bodybuilding, is a fantastic group of people. I invite you to come join and join in the fun there. So uh, I'll let you guys go. This one ran a little bit long, but I really wanted to get this information out there and kind of set the record straight and kind of re-simplify um, this process and remind everyone that it is simpler than it may seem and you need to stop overthinking it and we need to look kind of ahead logically before we make any preconceived notions of what keto is, especially in a hard training environment. So until next time, more coming next Saturday. And uh, we're gonna be looking into filming some workout videos for the channel. Um, so we'll kind of see us in action out there and uh, maybe you can get some, uh, some good stuff uh, to add to your workouts. And if, speaking of that, if you need workouts, I offer this $7 a month membership. It's available at the website, kgbodybuilding.com. It's called In the Trenches. There is already 161 workouts on this membership site. It's seven bucks a month, 161 workouts. I update it every week. You get four to five workouts a week, every week. And uh, each workout has a video description of the exercise the number of sets and reps that I did. It's basically every workout I do. And as I'm coming into this gain phase to get ready for nationals in July and we're training hard, the In the Trenches workouts are gonna be even more exciting. So I invite you to join that. Seven bucks a month, cancel at any time. You can't beat the price, practically giving this shit away. And it really goes a long way in helping us pay the bills over here. So thank you for your support. So until next time, have a great weekend, train hard, eat a steak, and I'll see you later.